So it's March 2020, the pandemic starts, you sell all your stocks at all time lows. All right. Later in the year, December 2020, you buy back stocks at all time highs. And you know what happens a few weeks later, you know, you're feeling good. Your stocks are going up again. January 2021. Uh, if there's another dip, I'm going to be going all in. Fast forward to last week, December 2021. You sell everything again. Is that you? No, that's a clown. That is a clown. In today's video, we'll be going over the stock market crash, how to make some profit during these crazy times again. It's always a crazy time, always drama in the markets, especially if you own any Chinese companies or growth stocks. My name is Bruce Wang and you guys know what to do. Drop a like, subscribe if you have it, and let's jump right into it. So I'm going to be linking everything in today's video down below in the description. So go down there and check out some of the free stocks, free crypto that you can sign up for as well. So real quick, stock portfolio is sitting at $323,000 annual income from dividends, 6,600. So that just, that's just about $500 every single month on average. So over the past few weeks, I've been down a lot on my growth stocks and Alibaba specifically. Um, that's the only Chinese company that I have. And I'm going to be telling you guys why that is happening. On top of that, I'm going to be letting you guys know if I'm panic selling, if I'm buying more or if I'm holding. So one of the main reasons why we've seen a crash over the last few weeks is because of Omicron. So the same story is happening yet again. All right. A new strain of COVID is popping up. Um, U.S. daily deaths average surges. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fear um, based around this. So the second reason why the market was crashing over the past week is because of tax loss harvesting. This is basically, you know, so December is a big month for people to take gains, um, you know, sell losing positions to lower their taxable income on that. And tax loss harvesting has been around for a very long time. I personally will be selling off probably some of my losing positions this month to cover some of the gains from that I've been taking over the year. So I'm going to leave all this in the description down below. Um, so you guys can also take another look at it. It's a very simple concept. A lot of investors and institutions, they do this to just lower their taxable income. So we got Omicron fears. We got um, tax loss harvesting. We got a lot of institutional investors selling out of their losing positions, especially when it comes to Alibaba. All right. So Alibaba is a company that I originally got into um, at the end of 2020. 2019. So I've been in this company for um, a bit over a year. And, and when it comes to Alibaba, I still believe that it is very undervalued. And a lot of the things that is a lot of the news articles and news stories coming out of um, ma mainstream media right now is, you know, blown out of proportion. All right. So China, there's fears that China is going to delist them. And, you know, that's another story in itself. Um, Basically, China delisted a company called Didi, which is uh, Didi is the Uber of China. Alibaba is the Amazon of China, and they're they own about 50 percent of the e-commerce business over in China. Still, um, another reason why that um, Alibaba hasn't been doing good and a lot of fears is because of their last earnings. Their last earnings basically wasn't that good. But still, are they a growing company? Yes. You know, instead of growing 30 percent every single year, now they're expected to grow, you know, closer to 20 percent every single year. Still a high growth company with a long track record. And, you know, earlier this year, Alibaba was sitting at if we take a look at the last month, Alibaba has dropped 23 percent. Just last week, Alibaba was sitting at one hundred eleven dollars. And over this past year, it's down forty five percent. Which is terrible. All right. Completely terrible. But Alibaba is a long term hold for me. I'm going to be holding this for the next five to 10 years. And I truly believe the fair value of Alibaba is sitting closer to about two hundred dollars. Finbox is giving it a fair value of one hundred and ninety three dollars. So there is a fifty five percent upside in the, you know, medium term for this company. Maybe within the next year or two years, it could potentially recover back to this price. Um, if you're buying Alibaba today, you know, you're going to be getting Alibaba way lower than my average cost basis. My average cost basis into this company. Um, let's check it out here. My average cost basis here is two hundred and twenty one dollars. 
I'm slowly trying to average down as much as I can. I'm also selling some cash secured puts to lower my average cost. And that's what I'm going to be doing for the next year. You know, slowly average down. Um, this is saying that my portfolio diversity is sitting at 20%. But if we add in everything in the entire portfolio, it is actually a lot lower than that. So this is uh, right now Alibaba is sitting somewhere between 7% of my entire portfolio. And that is just going into going more deep into just risk management and understanding that your portfolio should not just be one company. Your portfolio should be, you know, maybe 10 different stocks, 20 different stocks. Um, if you're just a beginner, I recommend, you know, looking into ETFs, guys. ETFs is... ETFs is where I started. Um, VOO is the first ETF that I've ever bought. All right, Vanguard 500 index. This is uh, covering the S&P 500. And over the last year to date, it is up 26%, all right? So like I said, Alibaba is only 7% of my portfolio. The other, you know, 50 to 20% is, about 20% of my portfolio is in ETFs. And if you're tracking like my entire net worth, and if we're talking about my entire net worth, the stock market, my stock portfolio is only like 10 to 15% of my entire net worth here. So I'm saying that to say, don't just YOLO into, you know, a company just because I'm talking about it or another YouTuber is talking about it. Make sure you know what you're, know what you're willing to risk and, you know, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. If you are putting in so much money into a company that you can't sleep at night, that is when you know you put in way too much money <laughs> into a company. So where are we in the cycle of the stock market? I believe that we are somewhere in this area, all right? Around the fair area to desperation area. Um, you know, maybe last week, if you guys were down 20, 30, 40, 50% in your portfolio, you guys might be feeling like it's around here. But I believe it's somewhere around here. And I want you guys to know that the stock market works in a cycle, all right? Around the beginning of this year, definitely we were in the euphoria area, all-time highs for a bunch of companies. Meme stocks are were, you know, taking over the stock market. Still, they are, um, you know, a big part of the stock market. Um, you know, Tesla's sitting at, what, $1,000 right now. Um, Apple went all-time highs, like, multiple times this year. But uh, definitely the cycle you know, it doesn't stay up here forever. And, you know, as the as the year has gone on and as December has come around, definitely I feel like we're in this area. And the best time to buy, in my opinion, is when you see this word in in the ma in the mainstream media, capitulation. Which means, you know, a lot of investors are gonna be like, maybe the markets aren't for me. I'm gonna, you know, just sell everything. So like, a, the, like in the beginning of um, my video, uh, you saw this meme here. You sell everything in the last week. Probably not the best idea. Um, so look for this word specifically, all right? Capitulation. And if you guys don't know, this is the point of maximum financial opportunity. Why is that? I think you're going to see a lot of um, companies that are very undervalued in, in the beginning of 2022. So, um, you know, for the next three weeks, there's still going to be massive volatility, um, you know, in the beginning of next, uh, next in the first quarter of, and in the first quarter of 2021, there's going to be a lot of volatility as well, but that's where you're going to be able to find, um, very good opportunities financially. And, um, you know, when we reach the starting point of this cycle again, um, you'll, you're going to see here point of maximum, maximum financial risk. Um, this is a good time to sell. Um, and you know it yourself, all right? When you when you hear your, you know, neighbors talk about certain stocks, where you hear about certain people saying, or when you have like random people coming up to you telling you it's a good time to be in the stock market, or your mom's telling you, hey, why don't you buy this stock? Or your dad's telling you, why don't you buy that stock? That's where you might want to start trimming off some of your, you know, high flying positions. Definitely, I've seen a lot of random people giving me like stock tips, which um, they are very underqualified. I would say very underqualified people giving me stock tips, and um, you know, I'm just passing this along. So all these links I'm gonna keep in the description, so you guys can, you know, look into them a bit further. 
Um, here is another good one, the fear and greed index. So I like to take a look at this fear index every now and then to just see where the emotions are and what's driving the market. Um, we are closer to, to the extreme fear side than the extreme greed side. So I think that you will find a lot more opportunities when you see extreme fear. Like the great investor, like the great investor Warren Buffett says, be fearful when people are greedy and be greedy when people are fearful. And uh, you're gonna be you're gonna find a lot of good opportunities when you see extreme fear in uh, certain stocks like um, Alibaba potentially. So if you've made it this far into the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, go check out some of my older videos here if you guys want to see more content from me. Links are gonna be down in the description. So everything from today's video, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.